Welcome, welcome back to another week of Fall 2024 Anime Weekly Tier List, where I rate the most recent episodes, with the Sunday being a cutoff. So today's episodes of Ari Furata and Grieve, uh, Talking doesn't count. First, let's talk about some shows that we've dropped. Unfortunate, but Banished Sealer, another show that we're dropping. Appraisal Isekai, you know, Orb, I talked about last time, right? What else has been dropped? Goodbye Dragon Life too. If you look at the viewership of Goodbye Dragon Life, it's the most recent video actually eclipsed 2K views. And relative to the other mediocre weekly series, 2K views is pretty good. But what you don't see is the average watch time being presented. And it's looking like it's a bunch of... Just a bunch of coomers that wanted to see what was the red-haired waifu and he watched for three minutes and left. It tells me that the quality of the audience isn't there. Even if it's a bunch of views, it's just a bunch of people that don't even actually care about this show. And it is what it is. Also, that's, I was talking about Banish Stealing. This Dragon Life also was pretty underperforming. But I think that with confidence, this is the final roster of seasonal animes that we're checking out for this season. For, so far, every one of them has been pretty decent, right, in terms of performance and stuff. There is Spirit Chronicles that we will be... Where are Spirit Chronicles? Spirit Chronicles go. I don't see it here. But uh, maybe it's this one. Yeah, this one. So Spirit Chronicles Season 2 will be introduced when we get to Season 2. Right now, we introduced the Gauntlet system where any straggler left over seasonal anime that we didn't check out, you vote it and we simply watch it. We're watching Season 1 right now. Once that's done, Season 2 will be added into the roster. Now... Let's talk about Tower of God. It's crazy to me too, man. And maybe I'm over glazing. I don't think it's in the peak tier, but I think it's better and good. I think the most recent episode of Tower of God genuinely gave me hope that the workshop battle arc isn't going to be absolute ass. And it's going to be average, slightly above average, maybe. The fight scenes were actually animated. There was... Decent impact that I felt from the fight scenes compared to what we've seen all the way until, you know, the workshop battle arc. So things are looking kind of good for now, but let's see how long, you know. Maybe they're catfishing us. Maybe they're just, you know, trying their hardest in the beginning of the workshop battle arc and later on it's gonna fail. Who knows? And another shocker is Blue Lock. <laughs> and yes, yes, I know. I farm the blue lock drama harder than anyone else does. But by doing so, I think I have a pretty good idea, an objective stance of like where this show is right now. And most likely next episode and beyond, it's probably going to drop down here, if not here. But in terms of the most recent episode, the hype that was created for the setup of the U20 leading into the match was so good. If you just look at all the different frames and scenes leading up to, you know, the kickoff, this should look fantastic. It's just the problem is, once the match starts, you realize that, ah, uh, no, things are not moving again. It's just the ball going, CGI. The botchita movement was decent, but I think that the most recent episode was actually great. But uh, let's be cautious with this, because I don't think that it's going to remain here for much longer. Next up, I'm willing to put this in peak. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe it should be at the top of great, right? Maybe it should be at the top of great. But like, bro, Villainous? Most recent episode? Oh my god. It got spicy. The main heroine, the sage, right? She's wilding out. Her naivety, I don't think, is, you know... In, I, I think her naive kindness is intentional. I think there's malice. Intentional malice hidden with a smile. There's something more than meets the eye. The way that Duke, you know, our PDF <laughs> pre-order man saved us and lashed out at Liz was so, so fun. This is pretty much the, um, I wouldn't say pinnacle, but in villainous shows, I realize that quite often drama stuff like this happens and it's just so peak. I love the villainous genre because moments like this can be had. It's so much fun. And if you're not watching this simply due to the cover art, you have no idea what you're missing out on. If you enjoy sassy drama, if you enjoy just heated, just fucking rants from me, which I think is my best content. I think my best content 
Sometimes it's just overanalyzing shit, but sometimes it's just me just going on a fucking rant. It's just me popping off at the absurdity stupidity that's happening on the screen, and this show is right up the alley. You should check it out. Next up. Mao 2099. The most recent episode, I think, was a decent episode, right? It was more set up. The Demon Lord and the Hero are uniting. Makina had a great moment with her transformation. We have the English voice actor, you know, just artifact. <laughs> just whenever she shows up, the secretary or Marcus and starts, you know, saying random English words. It's just, that's my humor. So it's just funny to me. I think it was good overall. It was good. Next up, Ari Furita. If Villainous is going to be on peak, then Ari Furita, I think, also should be on peak. Ari Furita had a pop-off moment with the conclusion of the Empire arc. Maybe it's not completely over yet. Maybe today's episode will be more aftermath of what happened. But the assassination of, you know, key officials and taking the Empire hostage and forcing the Emperor to meet her demands. Shea having great moments. It was amazing. I wish it lasted a bit longer, right? I wish that the whole, ep like the whole, like, if they simply just like stretched the content towards two episodes and just had more assassination shit, I'd be eating that up. I love that. I love Shea finally getting her moment of, you know, decisiveness, her revenge against other, other people in the Empire. The Emperor also? Listen, Emperor's bad. Empire bad, right? But the Emperor, <laughs> I really like him. And I think the author is trying to make us like the Emperor. Obviously, he's an antagonist and, you know, he's... He accepted the demand, so now he's like, you know, has his vow where he can't be racist and he can't, you know, like, you know, attack the Halias. But moving forward with the story, I could totally see the Emperor clutching for us, having like a great moment of alliance when we need him the most. I, I straight up think the, the, the Emperor is a great character. Now his son? Oh, thank God he died immediately. Next up. Loner Life Isekai. There's a lot of fucking peak episodes, huh? I mean... If I'm gonna put like, ah, listen, listen. Maybe it should be like this. Maybe I'm wild enough. I, 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 I think the title of Peak should be Peak. And these were amazing, fun episodes. I feel kind of bad for putting Mao in mid. You know? I do feel bad for putting Mao in mid. Maybe I'll put a bottom here. But I thought these are great, but relative to this, I don't think so. Ah, just... I think this is a better representation. I think I'm wild enough. I think this is a better representation. Loner Life Isekai, an Isekai that many people may not be checking out, but for the few that are, there's a lot of, you know, dedicated people enjoying this show, and I do enjoy the whole storytelling aspect of it. It may not have a deep plot, but we're just kind of chilling and just, you know, checking out different things, and... The way that Haruka actually stepped up and said, even loners have things to protect. His battle against, you know, 1 plus 1 equals not 2 guy. <laughs> Sorry, 1 plus 1 equals 2 guy, the math guy. He was a bit of a fraud, for sure. Haruka's ingenuity. What was the lesson? The lesson is that instead of relying on OP powers, right, which leaves you just kind of stupid, having quote-unquote shitty skills forces you to be creative and to truly explore the skills and figure out how you can use them in combination and come out on top. It was a great moment for Haruka. It felt like a season finale. It was great. The fight scenes, it's not like JJK quality, right? This isn't the best fight. But for a random isekai that showed up out of nowhere, I'm really enjoying it. Next up. Let's talk about Talker. No, actually, hold up. Let's talk about Damachi. Damachi? Yeah. Well, it was set up. Maybe it should be like here. I still have so much fun with this shit, though. I glazed Danmachi so hard. I glazed Danmachi so fucking hard. Maybe I have a bias towards it. Probably. It's just the Freya's popping off. The Freya's moment of, uh... Should I say vulnerability? When she's laughing like a cute girl. <laughs> just going, squirming in bed. Because Belle, finally a man isn't simping for her. Finally, a man actually turned his back when being invited into bed with Freya. And Freya's like, oh my god, this is so good. Someone's actually playing hard to get with me. Oh, and Freya just wants to chase and chase and chase. <laughs> Maybe you think this is like a stupid, you know, way of judging the show. But like, hey, it's my personal enjoyment. And whatever the Freya's shit's going on, it's just always so peak to me. The whole training arc stuff was also really brutal. He has to like 
almost die every day and then get healed up. And then at nighttime, he gets gaslit by Freya, who's reading the fucking diaries from, you know, the guild secretary who has all the information, the journey, the journey like logs of Bell. Pretty fucking hilarious episode and sad. But overall, Damachi staying on peak. I don't care. I'm a glaze. I'm a glaze. Next up. Let's talk about Talker. Talker, I think, was a great episode. It hit us with one of the most tragic backstories I've seen in anime. Maybe not the most tragic, right? I mean, One Piece character flashbacks. Oh my god, those are true tragedies. But what happened with the samurai guy? I don't want to spoil you, but like, oh my god. His circumstances of birth, what he had to endure, just then being sold into slavery and having to survive. Like, I feel bad for that guy. Aside from the crazy fucked up backstory... We have some uh, funny moments from the different like mafia bosses. They're crazy. They're batshit crazy. And then Noel versus the Samurai guy, you know, standoff. We also had Loki actually. He was a good guy after all. Kind of. I'm not really sure. He sold us off, but we're like, all right, I get you. We forgive you. And you know, he's, he, he, he's, he's like, all right, I'll see you later, bro. It was a great episode. I think it was a great episode. Next up, Dandaran to the fucking top. I may enjoy Dandadan as much as ReZero, if not more. Dude, I can't believe how hype the cat is. Like, when everything was fucked up, Okaru and, you know, Okaru and Momo, they're all just done. And we're like, who's gonna save them? Oh, shit. It's the Neko Baba. Standing tall at one foot six, bro. Just drops us with the thick lore. Beckoning cat. You know, bring good luck. And right now, what you have in your mouth, and this, that's a lighter. And then boom, Nekobaba doesn't have to do anything. Her simple presence is enough to solve the situation. Nekobaba is so, so peak to me. Actually my favorite character. So cute and funny, but has so much sass and just acts so cocky. And then has this utility function of being a lucky charm. Makes me want to get a beckoning, you know, cat merch, man. I, when, whenever they launch the Nekobaba merch, bro, I'm going to buy it. We have Grieving Souls. I think the most recent episode was, it was good. Maybe it should be like here. It was kind of fun. Um, It was, it was, uh, the whole like, does this slime exist or not, you know, debacle came to an end as we had the NPC guy who thought I would die immediately, go take a piss and realize that, oh my God, Cry was right. Those moments are genuinely fun to me. Whenever Cry does something stupid and he's, you know, being lazy about it, it pisses me off. But when other people are like, holy shit, it's actually happening. It's, it's actually really, really funny to me. The fight scenes with Sven was sick. The arrow draw mid air. Oh my God. I'm like, what's he doing with the quiver? The arrows are moving, but nothing's being loaded. And then he shot one arrow, and then he caught the other arrows falling from the sky. And I'm like, oh, I see. It was pretty fun. Yeah, the narrator also broke character at the end and told Liz to shut up. I think that it was a great episode. I think it was. And finally, God damn it, bro. The show that lives rent-free in so many different fandom sites. People from all across Twitter, the mental illness just continues to propagate as they can't comprehend why people enjoy ReZero, of course, to the top. Maybe like this. ReZero was a setup episode, but the really key moments for me were obviously Priscilla's Yang Sword, along with Subaru's declaration at the end. A lot of people are also saying like, declaration? Speech? Nah, 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 you got no clue. Next episode, a fat speech is coming. You thought the declaration was hype. Wait for that. And next episode, it's like a 30 minute episode, uh, episode, man. It's going to be thick. The reaction is probably going to be over an hour long. We're fucking eating ReZero all the way home, baby. And that's pretty much it. This is this week's tier list based on my enjoyment of the most recent episodes. Again, these animes being dropped. This is copyright. You guys didn't care about this, 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 and this. And it doesn't mean that these animes are bad. It just means that according to the YouTube algorithm and the audience that I have, the majority don't give a fuck about it. And the more content I make around this content, the slower the growth is. Hopefully you understand. If you don't, go fuck yourself. Goodbye.